here and there. So when we do an operation, obviously you have to have ammunition, you have to have food, you have a number, number of other things, other vehicles. So we can do what we can, but that is a stopgap measure. So one of the, clearly one of the major, perhaps the major priority in the new period ahead is to try to finish the hard work of building an army. And I know I have a couple of military colleagues here and disguised in civilian dress, but they're here. And they will tell you that uh, the long, that's a, it's a medium to long-term process to build an army or a police force. Both of those are works in progress. And they've, and they've made commendable progress, but there is a good long way to go uh, down that road. Um, the, uh, the other question, back, going back to North Kivu, um, again, I think, as I've said to you, I think the calculations have all changed. The elections are changing everything. The three major militia groups that are left in Ituri threatening a population. You got a group of the FRPI of a fellow named Cobra Matata, you have the FNI of Peter Karim, you have the MRC of Mathieu and Gujolo. All three of those men have now entered a demobilization and community re reinsertion project because they're trying to get onto this fast moving train, trying to trying to still get on it. And so that is changing people's attitude. They know now. There is a full-fledged elected government in place, no longer transitional government. And I think that will change many of the things, including uh, in North Kivu. Now, I'm, of course, a congenital optimist, so you have to reduce what I'm saying by about 50%. But I think that uh, we, we, we will, they will certainly get there with support of the international community. Unfortunately, SIAP no longer exists. Uh, I haven't done the funeral, but basically it went out of existence when President Kabila was sworn in on the 6th of December. Uh, because under, we were we were a transitional institution under Annex Four to the to the peace agreement, but uh, we're no longer in existence. And one of the issues that the international community faces is how does the international community organize itself so that it might be of maximum support to these new institutions who will need uh, a lot of assistance. Um, I think uh, I think I'll let it go with that wrap it up here because. No, I'm not not aware not aware of that. We we think right now that the, the problem is getting these hardline commanders to let these people go back who desperately want to go home. They've been well treated. Some of them have actually been taken. You take General uh, Paul Warakaviji, who went back in November of 2004. Uh, they're back in the <coughs> army, so there there is a, there is a future for them there, and they would like to go back, but they're being held hostage by the hardline commanders who have to go to trial. Uh, on charges that uh, we're all aware of. Thank you all for excellent Great. questions, and thank you, Lebanon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like now to move to the second phase of our event. And by the way, let me thank, please, the Brookings Burn Project on Internally Displaced for all the work people have done to organize this event especially Molly Browning and Steve Most, uh, we're very grateful. And I'm also grateful to the three panelists here who are about to speak. We're going to begin with Susan Rice, who uh, many of you know as the former Assistant Secretary of State and Clinton Administration for African Affairs. I can assure you she is also a delightful and wonderful colleague at Brookings and also uh, an outstanding foreign policy analyst who has done many other things here at Brookings. Uh, including uh, being a uh, deputy foreign policy advisor to the Terry Edwards campaign, that was actually not formally a Brookings, uh, <laughs> during the time she's been here. And, uh, and in any event, we're delighted to have Susan. She will speak first, and, and then we will go to um, Tony Gambino and Bill Adeo. So thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ambassador Swain. Good to see you. I actually wanted to begin by uh, congratulating and thanking